Hello, this is a little bit of a video about the exchange and the wiring that's been on so far. Just before we start this, uh, it's, it's very exchange heavy at the minute. That's just because we're sorting this room out. Part of the uh, rearrange, uh, there, uh, the synthesizers and stuff will be covering quite soon because we're sorting out that room. But right now the synthesizers are in a nice little pile because that area has been sorted out. But just a quick one, I, if anybody has any sources of UAX13 group selectors looking for a handful because we've got this rack uh, without any group selectors. Uh, if there's anything you're looking for trade-wise, uh, happy to buy and, and travel them, come and pick them up if needed. But if, if anybody has them, maybe they want to swap it for those types of uh, final selectors or group selectors or something like that or anything else, just let us know. Fire us an email, please, because we're we're trying to, find, trying to find a handful. Hello, how's it going? This is just a quick video on the wiring of some of this so far. Not a massive amount's been wired in, but the power's there. Um, these are all connected together. I'll show you around the back uh, what they're actually doing in a mo. If I can find the butt, where's the butt gone? Where's the butt? Oh, there it is. So right now, all of these group selectors, actually, let's bring you over. Let's bring you over, let's bring you closer to it. Right now, all of these 10 group selectors are assigned to the number six. So this whole rack, if you want to get over to these group selectors from any of the other ones, you have to dial a six and it will go over to these. Um, these two right here, which are the nine and 10 of the UA Expert team, these are going to be wired into the um, phone like that actually comes in, you know, the one that you pick up your mobile phone, you can call them. They actually directly connect to these two uh, group selectors and to two here. So there'll be four uh, incoming lines, but I haven't wired that in yet, so we'll not talk about that. The other ones are connected to the incoming lines down there, the line finders. I spoke about those in other videos, but we'll touch more on those in another video as well, because I haven't fully wired in all of the phones yet. I'm still trying to get all the core wired in. So right now, each of these, if you dial six, you get to it, but to the point that you can basically dial six, 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 six blah, blah, the number of the, uh, you know, Six. Um, actually, before we do that, I'm going to turn on the ringing machine over there, so it automatically turns on. It's the same setup that it used to be, it's just a bigger ringing machine setup. Uh, I'll show you that right now first. So this right here is the ringing machine setup. Um, you can see the S and Z pulses actually uh, bleeping up there. They're slightly different to usual. Um, I think I might bring them back to the standard, but I found that it actually works better. Slightly different to the specified times, but we might go back to the original. So the two um, ringing machines are down here. There's a collection of other example ringing machines at the bottom. So this relay box here has got an Arduino in it. I might improve it and actually just have it a normal relay, but it basically turns on when any of these have uh, been picked up and it basically times it so the ringing machine turns on for about three or four minutes. That means it doesn't constantly turn on and on and off and on and off, but it turns off when there, you know, when there isn't any use at all. I can completely bypass this setup, but we're gonna flick this button. What that does is it basically connects that to this, which is the ringing machine changeover setup that we saw in the other video. So we're on that ringing machine right now. Um, So yeah, where was I? Let's uh, start calling the numbers to call up all of these group selectors. So, six. And it calls one of these. Not all of them have the lights in. I'm gonna modify them so every single one when they're selected, they light up much like this. Makes it much more visible. So I'm just keeping on dialing the same number. And it basically goes over to the next group selector in that bank. It means you can ultimately, if you really want, Call them all. Oh. Oh, I haven't selected that one. So these are all of them selected. Yeah. So we've got that set up. But also at the same time I've wired all of these to designate to number five. So if you dial number five, you end up going over to these group selectors. Uh, so if we put this in here, we dial five. We can keep on doing the same thing. Oh, that one needs a bit of work, that one. But the thing is, is this one is also wired in to dial this. So if we want to get over to this, what we do with these group selectors is we dial six, and it goes over to these, and then you can keep on dialing six over there, six over there, six over there, six. Oh, it's back. 
you can, in theory, dial pretty much all of these group selectors. That's not how it would have originally been set up. There would have been uh, these lockout tabs and things like that. But it's kind of cool. It's kind of, it really, um, it shows you the functions of it more. And I think it's a lot more fun and interactive if it's a little bit more like you can kind of twist it to your will. Uh, I think also this rack over here is actually wired into, I don't think it's wired into these ones yet, but it's wired into this so we can dial the six. <clears throat> no, actually maybe not. I remember having a little bit of trouble, it might be a dirty contact over there. Because I think, there we go, so. So right now we can call from this one, this. We can call from this one, this. And we can call from this one, this. However, we can't from this point dial any of these two. But right now if we dial in a five, this isn't gonna work talking to this. And that's because I haven't wired enough wires in yet. And we'll have a closer look around the back at what wires have not been wired in. So what's happening is thanks to all the wires that are up here that are slowly getting added. Um, so over here we have these two connections. And basically what these are doing is they're breaking out and connecting to each of these. So one side of these over here is actually connecting to the back of the group selectors. It actually connects to the connections on the back. There's four connections in total that it connects to. There's the plus and minus connector, which is uh, around the side. We'll pop around. Around the back, we have the central white line that's right here. And then on this side are all the even numbers. And on this side are all the odd numbers. So you go two, four, six, eight, blah, blah, blah. Number two is plus. Uh, number one is minus, which is right here. And then one, three, five, seven. Number seven is the M wire. And number nine, which is right here, is the P wire. Those are the only four that you need to wire in. So plus, which is this pin right here. Uh, minus, which is this pin right here, and then one, two, three, four. Then me, M, which is this brown one right here. But if you're not bothered about actually getting the meters to do anything, you don't need to worry about that. And there's this one right here, which is the P wire, which is number nine, but it's actually one, two, three, four, five pins from the center that way. So, yeah, so what is wired in, these are all wired in the back, and then basically there's four wires that connect to the back of this, four wires that connect to the back of that, four to the back of that. Um, and then that goes over and connects to this. And then this goes over via free cables up over there, down to the back of each of these racks. And then we'll have a look at what's going on at the back of this. This is not really the, I think this is not the way you're supposed to do it, but it kind of just adds more wires and it looks a bit cooler. So around the back, these wires head down. Uh, let's find one that's um, done. So this is uh, why uh, we can't actually dial in from this uh, rack right now, but we will talk about that in a moment. So this wire comes down, it travels into here, and then all of these wires connect to level six. So for instance, uh, all of these group selectors, so it's the plus, the minus, the M and the P wires of all of the group selectors go up, up this, or oh, ignore that one, go up this cable, up there, and then there's a bunch of these that are connected to the back of these group selectors. That travels up there, over up there, along there, down to the MBF. That comes back, over up there, down here, and comes over to this one. That travels down into here, then that comes over to the back again. So uh, it's done a long loop a de loop, but that's to add a bit more busyness over there and to kind of neaten it up and make it a bit more organized. I'll explain, it's because it's gonna get quite convoluted soon. So I'm trying to do it in an organized fashion. So that connects to these um, pins right here. What these are uh, is basically level six. So when you dial up to level six, so you type, uh, you dial six on the uh, dial on one of the group selectors, it goes up to level six and it goes and has a listen and sees what's going on. So all of these are actually connected to these thingamajiggies right here. So you'll see there's a connector there. There's one, um, there's a connectors underneath, the connectors on the top, connectors underneath. So this is, uh, I think it's MP and then there's uh, minus and plus underneath that. I can't, that might be wrong. Don't don't quote me on that one. I cannot 100% remember, but I assume it's that. So you'll see M, P, minus and plus. So M wire, level six. This is the M wire right there. And so level six, there's basically um, 
10 different sets of these four wires. So there's the M, P, minus, plus, 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 blah, 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 blah. And each of these groups of fours correlates to one of the group selectors. I know it's a bit of a head fudge. What that means is every single one of those group selectors is connected to these uh, connections in here. All of these cradles, this one and this one and this one, for instance, they're all actually wired in parallel together. They're just wired together via this ridiculous mush of wire. So you'll see that this wire goes along and then connects over to there. And that goes along and connects over to there. And that goes along and connects over to there. So they're all actually connected together with this unbelievably big chunk of uh, wiring around the back. So they're electrically bolted together. And what happens is when you dial it, it goes up and it listens to the P wire. That is the one of the wires that you connected. Pin number nine onto the back of this one, two, this one right here. That P wire basically says whether that uh, selector, that group selector on that, on that bank. So we plug it in again and um, we dial six. You'll see it'll go up to the sixth level and then flick over and try and find the first of the 10 group selectors that is available to be picked up. Goes to the first one because the first one's available because none of them are engaged. That one is over here, but I'm just gonna plug that. That's what this one right here, because uh, so if we dial six on here, you'll notice that this actually jumps over to the next free group selector. And now it's over on the third, you can see, it's gone over to the uh, third little pad in there. And that's that one. And that's going around to the next one. And then we'll dial another six. That's dialed over to the next one. And we're on one that is gonna end up over here somewhere. So we'll dial six. And that's gone all the way around actually to the 11th one, which ends up selling an end new tone because there's none, no more available. So before we can wire in any of the other fun stuff, we need to wire in all of the numbers. So right now, you know that we can't actually dial any number but six out of this set of racks. So we can't dial these group selectors because the wires from the back of these group selectors aren't actually attached to this rack yet. They're, they're actually dangling down here. We're gonna wire these into the level five. So uh, all of these wires correlate to all of them. So we get them over here, wax legs that down, have them poking through here and get them all going consecutively to the correct uh, connectors down here so uh, this rack over here already has five and six wired in so that's why with these ones we could call five or six because these uh, level five is already wired into the group selectors here and level six on this one is wired into the group selectors over there so uh, and then further along we go over to this one this one's solder tag instead of wire wrap and uh, this one's all wired into level six, so we can call level six from this group selector, but it's not wired into level five, so we can't call this central setup. Uh, we can only call the end one currently because there's not enough wires wired in. And also, the fact is, uh, in fact, that's what these ones are here right now. This is this is the level five. So when these are connected to this, we can call the level fives. And then uh, then after that's done, we need to wire to the back of these group selectors over here and set these up to be able to dial, I guess, level four. So that means if you dial level four, you end up on these sets of group selectors. Dial level five, you end up on those. Dial level six, you end up on the next ones. And when all of that's done, we can finally start wiring in the line finders, which are below, and the final selectors, which are right up there.
So here's all the wires going through the right holes for these group selectors to be called by these group selectors on level five. So we just need to cable wrap these onto the correct cable wrap terminal strippy things. Now those are wired in. If we dial five on these ones, we'll get these ones, hopefully. Okay, well, it's seized. So if we dial, there should be one coming up. Yes, it was over there, yes. So I've dialed six again. Now I'm gonna dial five and it should go back over to there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's move it over here. Let's dial six. And then that one's over here now. Five. Oh. Oh, five. Okay, so that means we can call five from here, we can call six from here, blah, 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 blah. That was a bit of a haphazard video, but I thought I should let you know what's going on with these things. You don't need to watch all these videos. They might be a little bit boring because I'm going to try and document every bit of putting this back together. Uh, the next thing I need to do is, after I've done that, uh, connect five into these ones as well. And then we're going to wire in the external lines into the two here and then connect all the telephones up and probably connect the announcers up, connect the diverter calls up, connect the call, local call timers, which are the things that control the meters. That's why we've wired in the meter cables around the back, which we didn't do before. And uh, then yeah, uh, Mitch is coming over in a couple of days to shoot a few different videos about the exchange for the museum channel. So hopefully they might be of interest. If there's anything you want to see on this more, then, uh, you know, specific things for videos, then let us know. Uh, the museum, like I said, is going to be open pretty soon again. And I'll document the rearrange. I haven't talked about synths in the museum for a while. That's because they're in a little bit of a pile because that's the place we're trying to sort out at the minute. When they're coming out, we'll be documenting them more. So I know it's very exchange heavy right now, but it won't be. It won't always be. It's just because the synths are in a little bit of a pile because the room that they're going in is getting all, uh, all sorted out. Anyway, have a good one.